<clears throat> thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, this is a presentation about the you know, Horizon 2020 uh, project that you think that at least you know, trying to facilitate a platform that might actually help some of the first steps in terms of you know, both you know, <laughs> identifying outbreaks uh, also, and then also transferring that information into those that actually need that. <clears throat> I think that well, we all know this is about you know, infectious diseases, and we have a lot of new things coming up. I think the important thing is that we cannot predict what is the next one that's going to emerge, what's the next variant, and our, our diagnostic test, our, our vaccine, is that actually going to work against what's going to emerge tomorrow. And this is something I've stolen from you know, Prepare, uh, you know, slides, and I can see Herman sitting there, so I'm very happy that I put even the look on uh, Prepare on, so I didn't, uh, didn't actually know that when I made the slides. But this is basically you know, the situation today. You very, very late, very often very, very late, you know, identify an outbreak, you very, very late, you know, come with any kind of response, and then if you actually go out with treatment, clinical trials, or scenes, as we just heard, well, you are actually on the other side of the peak of the outbreak. That is very good for publications, because you know, we all know the you know, more people that die, you know, the higher impact the publication will have. On the other hand, whereas if you pre what we really want to do is actually prevent something. So what we want to do, and what we actually see there was a need to do, was really try to, you know, <coughs> identify something at a much earlier stage, but then also get the communication flow from what is out there, what is the outbreaks, having the first three cases in three different countries, link that we have something going on, and then get that information transferred to those that need to take action or develop clinical tests, you know, vaccines, etc., etc. We actually, so basically I think that what the world needs is just real-time occurrence, you know, on all infectious agents available for everybody in real time. Automatic detection of clusters is there something that's of interest where I as a company or anything else or as a, a authority should go in and to do something. <coughs> Possibilities to observe is something moving in other countries that could also be about you know, sale of specific diagnostic tests or vaccines in certain areas so you actually target the right population there and of course uh, ability to rapidly compare, very, very easily compare between all uh, types of data. One problem is, of course, well, there can be no real-time surveillance without real-time sharing of data. So how do we facilitate the sharing of data? Because otherwise, we're not going to get anywhere. We do think that the next generation sequencing data actually offers a lot of opportunities there. <coughs> I think that it's uh, something that's getting more and more commonly used, uh, especially also in the developing countries, because it's very, very, very easy to deploy in developing countries. They can really leapfrog. Uh, we set up sequencing in Moshi, Tanzania, and it took three days. Basically, MySec up and running, and you can actually do you know, sequencing. Whereas we try to facilitate just isolation of salmonella in different countries, and it's been a complete nightmare. So it's easy, and you have one technology that actually basically takes all. Also, this is actually something that's rather common across all pathogens. So basically, it could be that analytic tools would take everything you know, from virus, parasites, and bacteria. <coughs> And of course, it's, it's getting into the developing countries. I think another thing that's equally important is this, the common language. It's actually something that allows you to compare data from different countries. Because if you collect data in one country using your own scheme, your own Excel sheet, your own headlines, it's very difficult to collect that. And we end up having global surveillance based on three years old data, as is basically what we're seeing in most cases today. So our vision was to say, okay, couldn't we build a system that just you know, takes care of everything across all reservoirs, across all time, across you know, all pathogens. <clears throat> so we got funding from the, the EU to start with, uh, building a, uh, well, you could basically say building an IT platform, an infrastructure, and see, uh, do some research around that. Based on you know, risk models for, for uh, sampling, uh, you know, basically you crab in, crab out. It's also a question of what is the samples, what's the quality of samples, how do you handle the samples, especially for metagenomics and the virus detection. It's really important that you have good standard protocols for actually also handling the sample, purifying uh, the mm -hmm. RNA. <clears throat> then there's a, a standards for processing of the samples and analytic workflows, because what we really want to, to give is, well, they make online tools for dummies. So anyone in a country, you know, in a sub-Saharan Africa can actually do bioinformatics, because I think that's a major obstacle. But in order to do that, you have to have some default workflows in terms of what to look for. Uh, is it this, what is the species? What is the, the resistance? Uh, what is the subtype? And we need to build that into a, a standard default workflow. <laughs> and all, of course, you no know, situation about a data information platform. <clears throat> I think that uh, just a few words on the data information platform. <clears throat> I think that uh, so what we envision is basically that you have a local uh, diagnostic clinic somewhere that are doing, for instance, sequencing or producing other kinds of you know, sequence-based data, and they'll have the data and then need some, some assistance about, okay, what should I do about these uh, 500 megabytes or, no, or uh, 10 gigabytes of data? Uh, and that's, of course, we're talking reasonably big amounts of data. So basically, then send it to a central server. 
the central server will do all the processing for you, do you know, automatic cluster analysis, and then you know, feed information into a temporary private database where you can decide, I want to keep my data confined. Uh, I don't want you know, everybody else to peek into my data. And then the U.S. decide, oh, okay, oh, there's something going on in Sergio Leone. We're going to stop all import from that country. So basically, having a little bit of privacy there. But allowing to have a shared database where you can invite people to share, just like Google, Facebook, uh, you can actually use the same, same. But of course, eventually, we want it up into the public domain. So it's really facilitating the easy transfer from private shared to the public domain. <clears throat> Knowing, of course, that people are also concerned about to do their own analysis, and there are a lot of smart people out there, uh, we're also going to facilitate the upload of private bioinformatic pipelines you can run in parallel with whatever we have. I th we are not the smartest people in the world. So basically, I think that a lot of smart people out there, why not take advantage of that and say, we have a default pipeline, if you have something better, come in, show, us, show, show it online you know, in parallel, and then we'll just you know, take your idea and implement that to the benefit of the world. And then, of course, you can have you know, your own epidemiological data, uh, patient-sensitive data, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think that perhaps people would like to keep that private in private databases or use you know, uh, local programs like CLC Bio, Bioamerics, et cetera, to handle the data. So, not excluding anyone, we really want to be inclusive of uh, all the technologies in the world. <clears throat> we have developed uh, some tools that have been running online uh, for, for some while now, and uh, this uh, has uh, really taken up and I've given up uh, using the uh, statistics. But basically, we get around you know, one uh, bacterial genome submitted to our server, uh, you know, no, two bacterial genomes submitted to our server every minute right now. From, uh, I think we have been using it's about you know, 12,000 different IP addresses in more than 100 countries uh, globally. It is mainly the US, uh, actually the Netherlands and Japan that are the heavy users. Uh, I don't know what is going on in the Netherlands. This is of course a lot of research projects, but we can certainly also see that it's much more than just academia that are using these services from around the world. And we're not stealing any data, we're not looking into it or peeking into it right now, but that is going to be the next step to say, to put a bit of pressure on actually sharing the information. So an update. We have developed international standards and studies for sampling, handling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and actually conducting ring trials. Uh, I love ring trials. I might actually say that I have to disclose that I'm also running with one of the World Health Organization collaborating centers, as well as one of the EU reference laboratories. Ring trials are very important. I think we were actually just appointed to you know, WSO Collaborative Center for Genomics. I think that's the first one that the World Health Organization has. And then we have the work for the needs for clinical diagnostic food safety and emergency diseases. That's you know, based on the consortium, but we would really like to reach out and get some information about what are the needs uh, for the future, you know, potential users or data providers. And we have web accessible sites for sharing of sequence data. This is big data. We're not talking gigabyte. We're not talking terabyte. This is, you know, into the petabyte area when you're talking basically mesodynamic sequencing. You cannot upload and download that. You need to have that, you know, more centrally confined. <clears throat> and I think the first versions are beta testing uh, of comparison of analytic pipelines. There's been avian flu, Ebola, of course, uh, Salmonella, and microbial systems, and now global mesodynamic. I think this was just uh, accepted, you know, an example, if we're in the consortium, it's coming out in science uh, soon, but still, it's, it's historical. I would really like to see this more in real time. And we have just started you know, a collection of uh, a sewage from global sources. Uh, I think that uh, since we are sampling in 78 cities, I'm sure that some of you are you know, part of our sampling frame. So thank you very much you know, for contributing if you use a toilet anywhere. Uh, and that actually includes Brussels. So uh, thank you very much for you know, participating. But I really think that the real-time data sharing is initially here. We have decided to go uh, real-time with sequence, you know, and releasing the data in real-time for Copenhagen. So the data for, we haven't even looked at the data. So you can peek into that and see if you can find anything in Copenhagen. Um, I haven't even looked at the data yet. So uh, there might be something of interest there. So last slide, our version is basically, you know, to build, you know, a system that serves everybody. And that, of course, includes you know, the frontline diagnostic, that includes public health, that includes industry. Uh, we'd really like to try to serve everybody. But it has, to, has to have something to do about open sharing of data. So pre-competition in terms of when it comes to the industry. It's not, I have the isolate so I can do the diagnostic test. It really has to be pre-competition level. I think that's the way we are aiming at. So cross-sector open source, uh, which uh, can be difficult in the commercial area, of course, interaction with the rest of the world, data for action, and then, of course, use, using the current central repositories, the current S3 infrastructure, uh, and not trying to advance you know, the wheel all over again. Thank you very much.